Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome um, to the first in a series of webinars with this one looking at how we can make full use of the new Ordnance Survey data and services in GIS. Um, so, uh, so before we begin, while people are still um, logging in and, and getting comfortable, I'll just set a few um, housekeeping um, rules. Uh, I suppose the first one is that uh, you'll be pleased to know that this webinar is being recorded. Um, so it means you don't have to frantically write your notes. You can um, you can leave that to us, um, and then you can rewatch the webinar at a later stage in order to to get the information that you need. Um, we've got a um, you can submit your questions at any time. So you'll see a panel on the right hand side that is a questions panel. So please feel free um, during the presentation and the demonstration to um, ask any questions at any time. And we'll, we'll have a look at these at the end. Um, and then finally, we've got a, we've got an exit survey that helps us to improve the webinars that we continue to run. Um, so it'd be really good if you could um, fill that in. Uh, and like I say, that just improves the webinars that we do. Um, so today, the, the webinar is anticipating to last about 45 minutes, depending on questions and stuff like that. What we will do is any questions that we can't answer during the webinar, we'll get back to you on um, via email at a later stage, but we'll try and answer as many as we can um, as we go through. So my name is Ian Usher. I'm a business development manager at CAD Corp and work with local authorities across the UK. Uh, and I'm really pleased to say that I'm um, joined today by my fellow presenters who I'll ask to briefly introduce themselves. So if we could start with um, Chris from Ordnance Survey, do you want to um, turn your webcam on and say hello? Good morning. Um, thanks for that, Ian. I'm Chris Wilton. I'm the Strategic Development Manager for Ordnance Survey. Um, and I'm very pleased to be here presenting with CADCOR today. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Chris. And then I'll pass over to Simon as well, if you just say hello, Simon, for me. Thank you, Ian. Yep. Good morning. <clears throat> My name is Simon Parker. I'm the pre-sales team leader at CAD Corp. And this morning I'll be demonstrating how you can access the PSGA data via the, via the Audience Survey Data Hub. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Simon. Um, so in the interest of ensuring that the presentations and demonstrations run as smoothly as possible, um, we're just going to turn our cameras off and hopefully that will improve the bandwidth. And it, like I say, it will just make everything um, run smoothly. But we'll anticipate maybe turning them back on as we go through the questions at the end. OK. Um, so the agenda for today. So I'm going to I'm going to start with a brief introduction to CAD Corp uh, before we pass over to Chris, who's going to talk more about the new ways to access the public sector geospatial agreement data. Um, I'll then talk about our work with Ordnance Survey, how we're able to connect to the OS Data Hub, the benefits of connecting to the service, before passing over to Simon, who will be providing a demonstration of how and what can be done with the OS Data Hub. And then after the demonstrations, as I've said, we'll round up with key takeaways of using the OS Data um, within CAD Corp products and answer any questions that you might have had. So I'm pleased to say that we've got lots and lots of people attending the conference today uh, and some of you who were brand new to CAD Corp. So I just want to um, briefly introduce who CAD Corp are. Um, so CAD Corp are a UK based software, software company and we developed the Spatial Information System or CAD Corp SIS, which provides desktop GIS used for capturing and analyzing spatial data. And it also includes web and mobile applications, which allow for the sharing, visualization, and analysis of spatial information over the web. And this is all built using the same um, CAD Corp core technology. And we provide these applications across multiple different business sectors, as, we can, as can be seen from the um, slide below. Uh, and this webinar is aimed at PSGA members as it relates to ordnance survey data available through the new OS Data Hub public sector plan. So CAD Corp provide a number of GIS products, and we'll talk about these more in depth throughout the presentation and demonstration this morning. Um, but to briefly introduce the products we have, uh, we've got CAD Corp SIS Desktop, which is our flagship desktop GIS application. We have CAD Corp SIS Desktop Express, which is our free desktop GIS application, and also CAD Corp SIS Web Map, which is our, our web mapping application. So, what we're here to talk about today are the new public sector geospatial agreement data sets that are available to existing and new members. As a, um, a very brief introduction, there are new and enhanced premium products in terms of address-based core um, and Scottish US, USRNs, OS Open data products, which include OS Open USRN, 
UPRN, TOID and linked identifiers. And they are also include additional products available to PSGA members, such as address based plus islands and Ordnance Survey Master Map Green Space Premium, as examples. And these are all available in new formats, which include geo package format, but also available through the new OS Data Hub. And the OS Data Hub Public Sector Plan allows you to connect to these data sets via a number of APIs that are available. And we'll talk more about these as we progress through the webinar. But the options available include OS Maps API, OS Vector Tile API, OS Features API, OS Places API, OS Names API, OS Linked Identifiers API, and OS Downloads API too. So what we like to do is we like to ask questions to keep these um, to keep these webinars as interactive as possible. So um, if you could just take um, maybe 10 seconds just answering the first question that we've got lined up, um, which has now been launched. So it's, is your organization using the newly available PSGA data? So is your organization, organization currently making use of the new data sets that are available to you as a PSGA customer? I'll just give you a couple more seconds to answer. And I'll give it two more seconds. So if I just close that off. So that's brilliant. So thank you very much. So there's there's uh there's fifty percent of you that are saying yes. So that's that's really good to know that you're also already accessing that PSGA data and you're already aware of what it is and how you can how it can benefit your organization, which is great. Um, we've also got a second question. So if I launch that, so the second question is, is your organization accessing P PSGA data via APIs in the OS Data Hub public sector plan? So have you already registered for your API key? And are, how, are you accessing that OS Data Hub in order to um, view that data? And what I'll do again is just give you a couple more seconds to answer. so i'll close it off again that's um so that's quite that's interesting that's quite evenly split this um it's kind of half and half between yes and no so that's that's interesting some of you are already using it and have probably come here to find out more others are not using it and have come here to find out exactly how they can benefit so that's a it's a really good um, position to be in and hopefully by the end of the um, webinar you'll be uh, more insightful into how the uh, the cad corpses desktop products works with the os data hub so um, what I'll do now is I'll pass over to Chris Wilton from the Ordnance Survey, who's going to talk about new ways to access the PSGA data. So I've made Chris presenter. Great, thanks Ian. Just bear with me while I share my screen. Thanks for the uh, for the intro there, Ian. I think you've actually done most of my presentation for me, so um, appreciate that. <laughs> but um, in terms of today, oh, hang on, guys. Typical, my um, navigation panes don't want to work now. Right, there we go. <laughs> so, there we go. Apologies, technical glitch there. So, just in terms of a little bit of background, what exactly is the PSGA? Well, it's the public sector geospatial agreement and it fundamentally changes the framework that we have between HMG and ourselves to provide you with a huge amount of data. Uh, it's a 10 year agreement that covers the whole of the public sector in Great Britain um, and uh, unlike previous agreements this also includes both Welsh and Scottish data in there replacing the old Osma agreement. So you know we're a year into it now and we're already seeing some um, some pretty impressive things coming through. Um, in terms of what that means in the real world, what we're trying to give you is new richer data, new ways to access it and new freedoms to share that data. And I know that the, the guys here at CabCore are going to come on to how they actually bring that to life for you. Uh, we have tried very, very hard to make this accessible to you. And I think although you can access it direct through our one sort of stop shop, yeah, again, the guys here can go through how they can actually allow you to have access to the PSGA data and also the uh, APIs that you can kindly mentioned uh, when uh, you use the CAD core system. Now, one of the things that I would point out is 
within the PSGA, there are levels of technical support available to you. And this is really important because there are some things that you can access direct, uh, but there's also a lot of things that you can access through CAD Core. And I think the message here is we're here to help and we're here to help you in the way that best suits you. So in terms of new ways to access our data, we've heard about the Data Hub and Ian's going to cover this in his presentation in terms of how you can make use of some of the, the rich information that's available here. And he's very kindly gone through some of the uh, open uh, APIs and other APIs that are available through here. At the moment, it doesn't include our premium products, but these are some of the, the products that are freely available to you. But I think it's important to go through some of the developments that are happening because although the PSGA was launched, uh, sorry, the uh, Data Hub was uh, made live in January, we're obviously coming through with some developments through the course of this year and into next year. But uh, without looking too far ahead, one of the things that's coming very, very shortly and we're currently sort of user testing is the error reporting tool, uh, which will be quite useful and I think uh, will, will make um, a big difference to some of the, the data sets that you guys use. In terms of the premium downloads uh, that are currently not available, those are coming uh, in the next couple of months. And I've listed there for you those that will be available. Um, and then later on in the year, we're looking to extend that to the whole partner network. So that's just a flavor of some of the things that are going on there. Now, what does the, the new richer data mean for you? Uh, we've all heard of the, the National Geographic Database. Uh, and I think the, the whole thing here is how we make the next generation of this data far more discoverable, consistent and easy to use for you. And in terms of uh, what that means, it's linking together all of our buildings information, addressing names, boundaries, everything that you can possibly think of that helps us make the world a better place for you guys and for us guys. So in terms of your ability to share that data more openly, uh, we have got some new uh, derived data and open ID policies, but the main sort of benefits of these are removing the barriers so that organizations can publish more of their data. And for example, we've got uh, more property extents from MasterMap and Topo. Um, and also we do have an open ID policy that encourage publication of identifiers. Uh, we can talk about that in more detail, but I'm very conscious of, of time here. But I think it's important that you know this. Uh, and what that actually means is that when you're talking about things such as the UPRN and additional property attribution, it actually makes the spatial interactions much more meaningful and much more powerful for you. And that's just an example that I'm sure we can uh, extend on. So in summary, what does all this mean for you? Well, what the public sector plan actually delivers is much easier access to our data. It allows you access to APIs for the first time. It's unlimited free access to some of the premium data that you'd have paid for previously. It allows you to track and organize your data across the platform, it allows you to manage your user accounts, set up your contractor access so that you can manage and collaborate on products, report and track errors uh, with the forthcoming terror and emission tool. And it allows you to spec demo uh, and access the guides and tutorials for all of our systems and products so that's a real whistle stop tour thank you very much for your time and i'm going to hand back to ian brilliant thank you very much chris there seem to be a little um that was it that was a good presentation there seem to be a little um sound uh, problems um so uh if we can um if we've got any if your users have got any questions then please feel free to post them the webinar will be available after um so there'll be there'll be information and you'll be able to see the slides after as well so um we seem to resolve them so i'll i'll carry on um as normal um so um so cad corp have been partners with the ordnance survey for a good um 30 years uh, we ensure that the wide variety of data files provided by Ordnance Survey, such as raster TIFF files, um, Ordnance Survey master map GML files, and the latest geo packages for ZoomStack and a number of other data sets are incredibly simple and effective for our users to load into all of our applications. And this includes CADCorp uh, SysDesktop, um, SysDesktop Express, which is our free desktop GIS application, and CADCorp SysWebMap as well. 
So when Ordnance Survey decided to release the OS Data Hub, as Chris has explained, it was entirely natural for us to support this process and ensure that we made it as simple as possible for the end users to access the data available. During the initial OS Data Hub beta phase, we designed and implemented a new user interface in CAD Corpse's desktop version 9 um, to streamline and simplify the user experience for all of our users. In order to access any of these APIs, an OS Data Hub API key is required. End users are free to use their own, obtained from the OS Data Hub after a free registration process. But to make it even simpler and more accessible, CAD Corpse's desktop offers access to the OS Open Data Plan, should the end user not have their own API key at the time of trying to access the OS Data Hub. Um, I'm not going to tread on Simon's toes as he gets the exciting um, bit of showing you the integration, but I'll just talk very briefly about the data available and the benefits. The new Ordnance Survey Data Hub user interface provides access to the OS Features API, which allows users to quickly access and interrogate the OS Master Map topo topo topography layer, um, OS Open Zoom Stack, OS Open UPRN, OS Open USRN, and OS Open Toid without having to store or process that data. It provides access to the OS Maps API, that lets users access a detailed and scalable backdrop map in the iconic roads, outdoor, light, and leisure API styles. And then it also allows you to use the OS Vector Tiles API, which lets users access detailed and scalable backdrop mapping in a lightweight format as vector tiles, also in, which also includes boundary line layers, green space layers, site layers, water layer, and a highways layer, um, and also a paths layer. So from the um, slide you see in front of me, in front of you, this is the OS Maps API in four styles across the CAD Corpses desktop application. And this is the CAD Corpses desktop, um, as you'll see in the screen image, um, but it's also supported, the, the same formats of data are also supported in our free desktop express software, which is what Simon will be um, demoing with shortly as well. And then this is the CAD Corpsis web map. So this is the same OS Maps API within our CAD Corpsis web map application. And it's also worth noting that the quick search um, functions within the web map, which helps users find a, a specific location, can be configured to use the OS Names and Places API. So this can be set up to search that API when a user enters the address query um, really quickly and really easily, and then give the uh, result back to the user that's, that's querying that information. The OS Data Hub is designed to save you guys time. Ordnance Survey are handling many of the hassles and complexities of spatial data management, so you don't have to, which means you can focus on creating even more value when doing the GIS work that you all love doing. By connecting to the OS Data Hub through any of the CAD Corp products, you are providing consistent base mapping across multiple applications and the organization and products that the end users will be familiar with. As an end user, you'll have access to the latest Ordnance Survey data sets being delivered through the OS Data Hub, which in turn ensures that your end users also have access to the most up-to-date mapping on their desktop or web mapping applications. The OS Data Hub is able to be integrated with other applications via CAD Corpses web maps, such as um, Microsoft Power BI, and can be used on web pages via embedded maps. And the OS Data Hub API data is available across our suite of products as we've as we've talked about uh, previously such as the CAD Corpses desktop the CAD Corpses desktop express and CAD Corpses web map so what i'll do now is i'll pass you over to simon who's going to demonstrate connecting to the os data hub what these products look like and how they can be used in a number of our different um, CAD Corp applications so i'm going to pass over to simon now Thank you, Ian. Good morning to you all again. So let's just share my screen and then I'll start my demonstration. <clears throat> Great. So, um, yeah, so we've heard from sort of Chris and Ian about the products that are available via the Ordnance Survey Data Hub. And so for my demonstration this morning, I'm going to show you how um, CAD Corp have added support to this new way of accessing Ordnance Survey data. But before I do that, <clears throat> At CAD Corp, we've worked very hard over the years to ensure that the CAD Corp SIS suite of products supports a wide variety um, of um, Ordnance Survey data and the sort of range of different data supply formats that they come in. And a key element of that support has been to <clears throat> just make it as simple and easy as possible to work with the um, data. 
So to start my demonstration today, I'm going to be using the CAD Corpsys Desktop Express application, which is currently visible on your screen. Um, and this version is free to download from our website, and it has the same Ordnance Survey data support as our flagship desktop GIS application. <clears throat> so in my project in Desktop Express here, I currently have the 250K um, scale color raster. Um, and one of the ways we've made it really easy to work with the Ordnance Survey data is to be able to simply drag and drop the data in the format that is supplied in by the Ordnance Survey. And one example is the um, Zoom Stack product, <clears throat> which I've downloaded here in the GIP package format. And as we can see, almost 11 and a half gig in size, but I can simply drag and drop that file from Windows Explorer directly into the desktop GIS. And if I pick on a village, so let's zoom into the village of Tafwell. As we zoom in close enough, we can see the um, building detail that the Zoom Stack product provides. Um, but if you want that really detailed data provided by the Mastermap Topography product, then we can also drag and drop um, the GML format that, that that data product is supplied in. So here I've got an example of a GML file for Mastermap. And again, I can drag and drop that directly into the um, desktop GIS. And we can see that topography <coughs> layer um, in the desktop GIS here. And then finally, we've also made it really simple to add tiled raster data from the Ordnance Survey data as well. So that could be the vector map product, could be open map local, um, or in my example, if I just go to uh, my folder, here I have got the um, master map imagery layer um, in ECW format, and I've got um, about 25 um, items there, 25 tiles. And I can add them really easily into the desktop GIS. And we can do that via our add overlay wizard. I'm going to use a raster index option. I simply point to the file where I've got all of those tiles of data. Um, and when I hit finish, it basically mosaics all of those tiles of data together into um, one um, single seamless overlay and obviously in the correct geographical position. So that was just a quick overview, just to show you some of the ways that we support Ordnance Survey data um, and the file formats that they're supplied in. So when the Ordnance Survey um, announced the um, data hub, it made sense, as um, Ian mentioned earlier, to um, add support and make it really um, as easy as possible to consume this new way of accessing the data. And connecting to the OS data hub, is a really simple process. So if we go back to the add overlay wizard, um, we have our ordnance survey category. So in addition to dragging and dropping data into your project, you can access a range of um, uh, OS data sources in this wizard. We've now included the OS data hub option where you can access dedicated wizards that support the features, the maps, and the vector tile API. <clears throat> now in order to access the API, and it's already been mentioned, you need an API key. Um, which you can add at the, at the bottom of this dialog. And then to the right of that, we simply tick this option here to um, <clears throat> access the public sector plan. Then you're basically ready to access the data. So if you just need some background mapping in your project, then I would recommend using the OS Maps API. And this mapping is provided as a web map tile service. And you simply pick which style you want to add. So it could be the light, outdoor, road, and leisure. So I'm gonna choose outdoor, and then just hit finish. And really quickly, I've now added some background mapping in my project from the OS Maps API, which we which we can see here. And if I zoom in close enough into the map, <clears throat> because we've got access to the public sector plan, you also get that master map topography layer once you've zoomed in. So the dedicated wizards that we've designed just makes it really simple to add that up-to-date mapping from the Ordnance Survey via the OS Data Hub. So I'm now going to show you an example of the um, Vector API. So let's go back to the o Add Overlay Wizard. <clears throat> and through the, the Vector Tile API, um, you get some additional products that are available to you. And that includes boundaries, green space, uh, green space and sites, for example. So perhaps in my project, you want to add some administrative boundaries. So we just select boundaries and then hit finish to add that um, product into my project. And we can now see the boundaries on the map, but it's not quite styled how I'd like them to be. So we can go to our overlays menu, choose the layer, and I'm going to override um, the style. So we've just got um, sort of red outlines for our boundaries. And we can now see that style 
has been updated accordingly. So again, just another example of how easy it is to consume data via the API. So let's now have a look at the um, final example that I want to show you in the desktop. So I'm just gonna move into the map. And the last API I want to show you in this desktop is the OS Features API. And this is slightly different to the, the previous two examples I've showed you because you can actually download the data as vector data. And as you know, the benefit of vector features is that you'll be able to select them, you can interrogate them, um, and you can use them for either analysis purposes or maybe for data capture. Now this wizard is product orientated. So on the left, we've got a list of our um, available products, which includes the master map layers for topography, green space and sites. We are working on the um, topography layers. So that includes path, highways and the water network. Um, and then at the bottom, you also have access to the OS Open um, products, which include ZoomStack, UPRN and Toid. Now the Features API has been designed for scenarios where you need some data for a small area. So let's consider a use case for the um, topography layer. So before I joined CADCorp, um, I used to work for a local authority. Um, and I guess a regular gripe back then from our users was the, uh, the concurrency of the, of the mass map data that we stored locally. And I guess there would be occasions where there would be a delay between you know, receiving those change only updates from, from the OS and, and actually getting them processed um, locally onto, onto, onto our local systems. Now, if the users just kind of want background mapping, then the OS Maps API, which I showed you, would be really great for that purpose because that will just provide that up-to-date mapping that they, those users might need. Um, but for those who may have a requirement to digitize new data or maybe they need to snap to master map, then the OS feature, Features API could help with this. And one example might be you've got a new housing estate or, or a development and we need to capture some new business assets against that particular new development. So I've selected the topography layer here for my product list. And then on the right hand side, what we see is all the feature types available for that product. And by default, our wizard will select them all for loading into your project. Then underneath, because I've selected the topography layer, um, I'm able to choose um, a style for, for, for the master map um, layer. And these are derived from the OS style sheets. And then right at the bottom, we have the spatial filter. Now the default option, is to load in features for the extent of my current um, map view. Um, and then also at the bottom here, users can specify the maximum number of features that you download for, for each of these feature types. So I'm gonna hit finish and I'm gonna test my internet connection. And whilst that downloads, that spatial filter I just mentioned could be, you could use that for maybe selecting a feature from another overlay. So you could have a polygon um, and say, maybe you want to load in master map features that intersect that polygon. Um, or it can also be a property filter as well, or property or, or attribute filter. So um, one example might be you've got the sites layer. Um, there's a classification type for, for each of those sites. And you might just say, let's load in all of the educational sites only into my project. So those master map features um, I've now downloaded from the features API. Um, and they are vector features, so that means I can use uh, our selection tools and I can select and, and query those um, <clears throat> vector features from the topography layer and we can see all the attribution here. And that also means we can digitize against all of those features as well. Um, and if I zoom out of the map, we can also see kind of the extent of the, of the features I have um, just downloaded from the features API. And then just as a comparison, in my project, I also have my locally stored master map layer. So I've just turned that on and I'm going to turn off the features I've just downloaded. So we can see in my local copy, yep, I've got that gap in my master map data, in my locally stored master map data. But if I just turn on the um, features I downloaded from the API, I've now got those new updated features and I can now work with them to then um, capture the business data that I need to capture. So I hope you agree that we've created a really simple user, face, a user interface for our users to um, connect and consume data from the OS Data Hub within our desktop GIS software. But beyond the desktop GIS environment, it's also important to you know, maintain that consistent mapping across your organization and adopting the same um, ordnance survey mapping across your different platforms uh, maintains that familiarity with your users. So on screen, um, you are now looking at the uh, CADCorp SIS web map application, and this is in my uh, Google Chrome browser. Um, and if you're not familiar with web map, it is a web mapping application that could be used for intranet and internet mapping. Uh, and it allows you to share your GIS data via browser to um, colleagues or, or members of the public. 
Now, WebMap also supports the same OS Maps API that I showed you in Sys Desktop. Um, and what we've got on screen at the moment is my background mapping. We're looking at the OS Maps light style. But if I go to the base map picker in the top right hand corner, I've made available all of the different style options. And I can then choose maybe the outdoor style to see the outdoor OS Maps API in WebMap. And if I um, zoom into the map, because we are or have access to the public sector plan, we still get that, that OS master map topography layer as we zoom in. So even in the web environment, you can also reap those same rewards as you get in the desktop by giving the end user access to up-to-date data. But also if you're you know, currently hosting and, and serving your own ordnance survey data into your web mapping environment, you can also save yourself some data management time and resource by you know, swapping over to the OS Maps API. Now in web map, it's not just about base mapping um, that we support here. We also support the OS names and OS places API. And right at the top of the web map interface is our search capability where um, our customers will use this to search for an address. And this is typically a connection to the customer's gazetteer, um, which might be stored in Oracle or, or SQL Server. So just as an example, I'm going to search for a road in Stevenage. So I'm going to type in Gunnels, and then I'm going to type in Stevenage. And then when I run the search, you saw how quick it was to return the results based on that search criteria. And in my examples here, I'm not connecting to any um, local data. I'm simply querying the OS names and OS places API only. Now the OS places API um, is an address lookup. So using my Gunnels Stevenage search criteria is giving me a list of results as full addresses. And then the other three examples are connecting to the OS names API, but each search is querying against um, a different um, identifier. So here, this first one is um, just looking at uh, town names. The second one here is looking at road names. And then the final one at the bottom here, looking at postcodes. And if I just take a look at the results for the um, road name search, what we do is we get our best match at the top. And then these are followed by some fuzzy results underneath. And then maybe just to show you a, a quick second example, this time I'm going to search for a postcode. So let's type in a postcode. And when I run the search again, you've just seen how quick it is to return those results. And we've got our results back from the OS places and OS names API. Now you could choose to um, you know, use these APIs by themselves in your web mapping application or, or use them to complement your, your own internal gazetteer search. And from my sort of previous LLPG experience, uh, one of the benefits I can see is having access to addresses that are outside of your um, authority area view because your own internal gazetteers will typically manage and store addresses within your own authority area only but having access to the OS Places API will give users access to those out of area addresses. Now beyond the web map interface, and one of the sort of benefits of the KCOP technology is the ability to embed and share your mapping across different platforms. And not only does this provide value for money for your, um, your, your GIS investment, but it also um, allows you to maintain that consistency of mapping across your organization. Um, and one example might be your public facing websites where you may have um, embedded maps showing the locations of services and, and this example here is just an embedded map showing car park locations and it's using the same OS Maps API that I've just showed you in the web map interface. So that means you can swap out all of your, your Google Maps on your public facing website and uh, replace them with ordnance survey mapping. Or you might just want to go full screen in the browser and in the top right hand corner here I've just got a layer switcher and I just wanted to show that yes you can publish those different styles that come from the OS Maps API and you can also turn on and off your business data within the embedded map environment here as well. But the sharing of um, mapping data doesn't have to stop with your desktop GIS and web mapping and um, where possible you may also want to integrate with non-GIS applications as well which might be gazetteer systems maybe um, your CRM or other business tools like um, Microsoft um, Power BI. Now Microsoft Power BI is um, an analytical tool that allows you to create interactive reports or, or visualizations of your business data um, and the CADCorp integration with Power BI enables you to include an ordnance survey map um, into your report. So you can actually see the geographical context to your business data but in the British National Grid coordinate system. And with the support for the OS Maps API in um, web map, it means this embedded map, which we see here in my um, fly tipping um, report here in Power BI, is using the same ordnance survey mapping 
but I demonstrated in the desktop GIS and web map application. So that really brings a close to my demonstration this morning, um, where I've just showed you how easy it is to consume mapping data from the new Ordnance Survey um, Data Hub. Um, I've also shown you a few examples of where you can benefit from um, accessing this new accessing um, this new way of um, accessing the data, shall I say? Um, and this data can um, be consumed within your your desktop and in your web GIS. You can consume it across your websites and perhaps um, within other non-GIS um, platforms as well. So you can have that consistent approach for using Ordnance Survey um, mapping across your organization. So thank you for watching. Um, I'm now going to pass you back over to Ian, who is going to conclude um, his presentation and answer any questions you may have raised during the webinar. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you very much for that, Simon. It's, it's good to see um, how easy it is to get the uh, data from the Ordnance Survey via the data hub straight into the, the CAD Corp applications. And that's, it's been a really good demonstration to see that. So thank you very much. Um, so I hope um, that you agree um, that we've made the undoubted power of the Ordnance Survey Data Hub API simple to understand and use within the CAD Corp suite of software. As Ordnance Survey handling the OS Data Hub, it allows you guys to focus on being creative and creating even more value doing the work that you're doing. By the dedicated OS Data Hub wizard within the CAD Corp Sys desktop, users have access to all options for data all pre-styled and with the relevant scales applied across all data sets, making the load of data as seamless and as effortless as, poss effortless as possible. And accessing the data, OS Data Hub APIs is easier than ever, allowing for users across the organization to view a consistent base mapping that users will be familiar with for all their needs and requirements. And because it's been delivered directly from the Ordnance Survey, it ensures, as you've seen from Simon's demonstration, that you've got the latest data available at all times. What, so what next? So after listening to all of the data sets being made available through the CAD Corps, this desktop and CAD Corps, this web map and the many benefits of using the, the new OS Data Hub, um, I'm pleased to announce that we've had a, uh, we have a, a new scheduled training course that has been added to our catalogue of scheduled training sessions. The CAD Corp SIS and Ordnance Survey GB data training course will take place on the 20th of April 2021 and is a half day training course. And the course include, introduces users to Ordnance Survey data using CAD Corp SIS. It provides an insight into accessing and managing the OS data, uh, OS GB major data sets. And this also includes gaining an understanding of how to access the OS Data Hub from within the CAD Corpses desktop and web map using web mapping services and the Ordnance Survey API keys. So please let us know via the exit survey or get in touch with myself or, or your account manager um, to talk further about these, these training courses that are available. So, um, so what we'll do now is we've got time maybe for a, a couple of questions. So um i'll have a look we, we had loads of questions come through during the demonstration so what i'll have to do is i'll try and answer a couple but we might have to get back to people um when it comes to um answering all of them so i'm just going to cherry pick some and i've got a couple for chris so i'm hoping chris is still around and he can say hi and we can um we can have questions for him as well um so the first oh, yeah, one that yeah. I can Excellent. Um, so I won't give you any difficult ones, Chris. Um, the first question that we've got is for um, CADCorp. So um, from David, he's asking, do we have to be on the latest version of CADCorp to use the data hub? Um, so um, the updates, which include the latest user interface within Sys Desktop and the access to the um, OS data hub via web map and, and CADCorp Sys Desktop, um, and the ability to connect to that um, data are all available within the latest service release. And that, that latest service release can be downloaded from the website. So if you visit the um, CADCOP website and go to the downloads page, um, you'll be able to see all the kind of latest software and all that, all that software um, supports the OS Data Hub um, uh, application. So you'll be, you'll be able to, to put your data in using that. Um, uh, Chris, uh, I've got a question for you. So um, Paul is asking, does PSGA date, uh, does PSGA replace PSMA? It does. Yes, the P, the PSGA replaced the PSMA in April last year when it was launched. So it's the new agreement and that is due to run for 10 years. So we're 12 months into it. Brilliant. Thank you for that, Chris. Um, I've got another one for you, Chris, I think. 
Um, so, uh, so Chris, so, so this is from Victoria. So do you know if OS are going to include master map topography in the OS Leisure API? It's in, apparently it's included in the roads, light and outdoor. Um, I'm assuming they're APIs that she's accessing. Now that's a good question. And I will admit, I don't know the answer off the top of my head, but I will check with our product management team and I will confirm the answer as soon as. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, and any questions that we've got for Chris that we've um, not answered, we'll, we'll be able to, to send them on as well. Um, there's, there's loads more. I think what we'll do is we'll probably, because they're getting a little bit more technical, we'll probably leave them to one side and we'll get back to the individual users um, um, around, the question, around the answers to the questions. Um, so what I wanted to do, um, very last thing to say is um, if you if you think of any questions after the webinar or you'd like to discuss anything that you've seen within the webinar today please feel free to contact me or your relevant um, account manager um, please don't forget to exit uh, to complete the exit survey on leaving as this is going to help us with kind of the future webinars that we are running um, and then finally i just want to say thank you um, to everybody that's attended it's been brilliant to have you all here and then just finally say thank you to Chris from the Ordnance Survey for um, giving us his presentation and for Simon um, from CADCorp for, um, for doing his demonstration of the um, uh, Data Hub as well. It's been brilliant. So thank you very much, guys. Um, and like I say, thank you very much for everybody attending. It's been great to see you. And uh, we'll see you again on, um, on a, a couple more webinars that we're running. Thank you very much.